Hey, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a rainy Wednesday here in Northern California, 10.52 a.m. November 20th, 2024 is the date. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows a 2.8 uh, across the area of the Indonesia Islands region. Uh, watching some elevated seismic activity here across the Japan area northward. Also getting some deeper activity here. Uh, into the Curl Cam Chatka Trench, it looks like. We'll cover that here in just a minute. I want to cover uh, first this massive, beautiful uh, low-pressure system here off the coast of the Vancouver Island Range. Notice uh, the last 12 hours here showing that uh, rapidly developing and tapping into uh, a lot of moisture out here across the area, leading back all the way uh, into the Central Pacific. So this is pretty much a fire hose uh, precipitation aimed directly at Northern California. And I tell you what, it's been raining pretty good here all night. Uh, picked up just about an inch of rain here uh, this morning and overnight. Uh, expecting another two inches before the day is over. Uh, it's just consistent rain out here. So uh, I can see that happening uh, quite easily. Uh, there is quite a few power outages up north, a little bit in the Northern California as well, but it looks like the main state, uh, Washington, seen a large amount of power outages there affecting, uh, well, it looks like almost 500,000 people there across the state of Washington with a majority uh, around the Puget Sound area. Well, that's going to be customers tracked. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's still a significant number right here, 389,000 people there around that region. And the uh, Puget Sound Energy Company, there's the uh, folks that supply the power. Uh, but that's a sufficient amount of people there without power uh, into Northern California here, mainly uh, up north here uh, across the coastline and into the Siskiyou County area, well north of Redding. Uh, had some winds up here 80 miles an hour last night, uh, I think even stronger in certain areas. So uh, this was a kind of a big deal. Uh, I'm sure they were expecting it because it's pretty much a massive system here. But, uh, you know, goes to show where the weak points are. And a lot of that could be some older trees, older power lines. And, of course, all it takes is one tree to affect a major power line or a major power supply and uh, have ultimate effects there for the, uh, uh, the power company. Uh, 41,000 people here in Northern California. Nothing outside where I'm at. I still have power. In fact, it really hasn't even been all that windy here where I'm at. It's been fairly quiet uh, in terms of um, wind. I think we had a little bit this morning, but that's about it. There's a rainfall map, as you can see there, Northern California, just here around Chico area where I'm at. Consistent rainfall coming in, just a fire hose of precipitation aimed at the area. Uh, this is a tilt one, so it's not going to show what's going on up here in the mountains. I'd have to add the tilt uh, a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit higher uh, in order to see the precipitation up in the mountains. But uh, the valley is getting a good soaking here. That is a uh, uh, definitely a interesting system taking place there. All right, uh, here's that earthquake activity across the Japan area. Uh, notice uh, the latest one, a 5.1. Well inland off the plate boundary here, 253 miles deep underneath this region. Watch this area along the Curl Cam Chatka, Japan region. Uh, they've been showing quite a bit of adjustment out here in the last 24 hours up and down the board here. Uh, now we got some further deep activity, probably adding some further strain out here uh, against the plate boundary. So keep an eye on that. Of course, this region here, one of my areas to watch for some mega quake uh, potential. It's been a little while since we've had a mega quake out here. On the Curl Cam Chatka, of course, 2011, the Japan Trench, that big old nine-pointer. Uh, but this area out here is very capable of producing um, just as big of an earthquake. And it's been a little while. Also, you got this region here, the, the uh, Kumano Ridge area. This is another major subduction zone area where the uh, Japan government uh, recently, in the last couple months, put out a mega quake warning here um, due to all the seismic activity right along this area. We see the seven pointers and other earthquake activity here, specifically in this region. They fear that the strain has increased across the subduction zone. So therefore they put out a mega quake warning for that region. Uh, taking a look here at the earthquake 3D globe, some movement way up north here, uh, just outside the Greenland area. That's pretty much the top of the, uh, I don't know if you can get any more centered up there on top of the uh, uh, the, the earth up there, that's crazy. 5.7, fairly decent size earthquake up there. 
Uh, it is on a area that, uh, let's see here. Uh, these are fracture zones up here. Uh, Spitsbergen fracture zone. Quite a few fracture zones out here. So uh, we, we've noticed a, a handful of earthquakes up here recently. Uh, I think they've been under the threshold there that the USGS reports, but uh, noticing some elevated seismic activity up there uh, recently. And there's, there's not... Uh, anything really big that would take place up there. I mean, occasionally we'll see some sixes, but that type of boundary, uh, those fracture zones there normally don't get super large in terms of earthquake activity. But as you can see, uh, they are numerous up there. So uh, really nothing new. You know, it's uh, it's an earthquake, and they see earthquakes up there on occasion. Um, let's see what else we got here across the area. South America, 3.4 coming in. Uh, nothing further here across the South Sandwich Trench. I was expecting this to fill in overnight following this five-pointer here across this area, but uh, so far we have yet to see any movement there. Uh, let's check out California, see what's rocking and rolling out here across the southern portion of the state. A couple smaller earthquakes in and around the San Andreas Fault once again. Um, nothing big, 1.7. And uh, another small earthquake over here in the last hour in the San Bernardino Mountain Range. That's a little 1.9. That swarm that we were watching down here in the southern portion of the state uh, has come to a halt as of last night. So nothing new being reported there for now. Uh, the seismograph stations down there look pretty quiet as well. Uh, but who knows? A little bit of quietness, and then we start kicking up into uh, waves of activity again. Uh, San Francisco, pretty quiet. Not a whole lot going on there. Washington, Oregon, nothing major going on aside from the weather. Uh, the rest of the uh, area out here, scattered earthquake activity around Idaho. Nothing going on in Yellowstone, but I want to double check just to make sure here. <clears throat> and in the meantime, I'm going to pop a cough drop here in my mouth. <clears throat> Still not 100% back to normal here folks it's crazy i mean i feel perfectly fine but it's just someone still has a voodoo doll of me and they're just they got a rope around my neck or something making me choke so i appreciate it if the uh, voodoo doll would get tossed somewhere well maybe not tossed because then i'd get tossed somewhere uh anyway let's see here i think i see the uh, five pointer on that map hold on a second here when was that five pointer 5.7, 6 o'clock this morning, so about almost 7 o'clock my time, so about three and a half hours or so ago. Um, that's going to be this quake right here. That's going to be the 5.7 well uh, around the Greenland area. This movement right here, hard to say what that is. Um, really not all that local. Uh, it is showing up here across Maple Creek, Madison River, and it's this little quake right here I'm talking about. It looks like a, a deeper earthquake somewhere. But um, let's see if we got anything across the area. 2.5, that's from, that's over there. So this morning, this is from last night, 2.7. So I don't know what's going on there. There's definitely a little reading there being picked up around the Yellowstone area. Maybe it's a, a really deep earthquake there. Nothing showing up on the USGS map. Uh, in terms of that recent earthquake, but uh, something, something showing up here on the map. Nothing local, that's for sure. Uh, I mean, it could be local, but it's probably uh, could be a fairly deep earthquake underneath the area. All right, uh, Texas area, Oklahoma. A lot of this from yesterday. A couple more earthquakes here this morning in the two range around the uh, oil fields of Oklahoma and the oil fields of texas is quite a bit out here let me tell you thousands upon thousands out there uh, the rest of the country looks pretty quiet as far as new zealand goes let's see what's checking in down there no new movement overnight this is from yesterday that four pointer off the south coast here of south island um aside from that uh, looks like some older activity there across the uh solomon islands area Newer activity definitely working its way up north here with that deeper activity in the region. So keep an eye on that. Things are getting uh, somewhat active out here across the northern hemisphere of the Earth. All right, so we'll see what happens here. Mediterranean fairly quiet aside from the typical small earthquakes out there. Nothing major going on out there across Hawaii for now. 
It's peace weather. Well, we're uh, kind of mellow. A little bit mellow out here in terms of uh, any solar flaring going on. Uh, just about a 10% chance here for X flare. M flare at 50. C flare around 99% chance or so. No major roars in the forecast. And a look here at the complexity of the uh, sunspots. Well, yeah, I kind of figured that was going to happen in this one. Uh, back when it was out on the far side of the sun, it was fairly advanced. But I watched it. Um, you know, as it made its way over here towards the eastern limb over the last week or few days, uh, it got less um, visible on the far side watch. So I knew it was weakening. This is an obvious sign here that the sunspot area is weakening even further. Um, not really expecting much from that the way that it looks right now. Really not any other newer sunspots out here uh, either that uh, would harbor any uh, you know, stronger flaring. So let's look at the far side watch, see what's going on here. Uh, this image is put out, uh, was put out yesterday. A couple old sunspots there from a week or so back, back when they were uh, on the earth facing side. Really not all impressed with them. Uh, 3883 over here may be an area to watch, but we still got a few days to go before this ventures into the uh, eastern limb. Might be another region right here, that darker sunspot area. This is the far side, by the way. This is the eastern limb. This is that sunspot area that I said has been weakening. I was tracking it. That was this group right here. This is the far side. So notice that it was fairly dark, deep, darker colors there, indicating a more complex sunspot region. And as it got closer here to the eastern limb, it pretty much faded away. And that's where we're at right now. Uh, just a dying sunspot out there. So... Really not expecting much there from 3901 as it continues to uh, just fade away. All right, far as severe weather goes in terms of convective activity, not a whole lot of thunderstorm expected um, across the area here today. Just general thunderstorm activity across the east, a little bit up here through the uh, Pacific Northwest, but uh, really not expecting much, folks. I do know that we're in for a whopper of a system here. This is going to continue uh, for a couple days. Let's put this into motion here. Notice that atmospheric river still being aimed right there at Northern California. Some pretty impressive rainfall rates. Well, we got another low pressure system joining in on that atmospheric river to amplify conditions here as we head towards a Friday time period and into the weekend. So that's going to be a, a couple days of some decent precipitation. And as we head through the weekend and early next week, it almost looks like we got storm system after storm system coming in here, uh, bringing us some rainfall and some flooding, I'm sure. Uh, and after that, looks like as we enter into December, more rainfall and more snowfall. Uh, it is our rainy season out here, so I'm uh, expecting it to be wet. Thing is, just got to be prepared, right? I'm stocked up on probably 30 gallons of fuel, multiple generators, um, pumps if I need them and uh proper drainage right you don't want your yard to flood that's how it all starts so you're going to make sure you have the proper drainage to uh, uh limit any flooding potential so I'm, I'm pretty well set uh for that matter i want to check out the total accumulated precipitation runs out here uh, that the gfs model is showing so on top of the almost inch that we've received already uh, as you can see it looks like maybe even more rain here uh, over another foot Expected there across the uh, mountain ranges there, California. The Sacramento Valley area looks like we could get another eight inches or so on top of this activity we already got. So it's a, it's a dandy of a storm, let me tell you. One earthquake right now just coming in within the last uh, 25 minutes or so. Tonga area 5.1. This, uh, this is some newer activity down here, it looks like, or up here from New Zealand. Uh, so either way, broad scale earthquake, uh, elevated activity here today, north, uh, all the way up at the northern part of the globe through the uh, Pacific here, a lot of deep activity. Notice that all across the globe and the most recent one, another deep earthquake activity there across the Tonga region. So things are about ready to get interesting. I feel, uh, these deeper earthquakes, uh, can sometimes trigger larger activity if you really think about it a lot of deep activity out here across the globe so we'll continue to watch it uh, and report back on anything if uh, we see some larger activity 
Uh, the seismograph stations, the ones that are up right now, are fairly calm. I don't think I have any uh, seismographs there around Tonga area. I may have to add one. We'll see. But, uh, yeah, enjoy your Wednesday out there, folks. It's a wet one, and I um, hope everyone's enjoying it. I know I am. Uh, yeah, I got power, a lot of folks without power. But the, the thing is, here's what I've always seen uh, and felt. Uh, you know, a lot of people can't handle going without power for a day. You know, panic starts to sit in, and that's where it's good to be prepared. Even if you don't have a generator fuel, um, a day of lack of power, hey, take advantage of that to, uh, if you're home, break out the cards, break out, you know, a game of checkers or play some go fish or even monopoly you know that's a good day for a long monopoly game hang out with the kids you know just relax put a couple candles on safely and uh, enjoy the the quietness you know we're, we're so used to just having power all the time and i get it it's a necessity but a day or two without it and yeah, i don't think that's going to kill anybody you know that your freezer your meat and whatnot will stay good for quite a while depending you don't open up the freezer and the refrigerator all the time you know keep it sealed and uh that that food has stay good in there good and frozen for quite a while so uh even though i got power right now if i lost it it wouldn't be that big of a deal to me i can fire up a generator even if i didn't have the generators hey take advantage of it and spend some quiet time here uh with the family not the end of the world all right folks i'm out of here have yourself a Good day. We'll catch you guys back out here a little bit later unless something major happens. Enjoy.